Okay, so here's five of my tips for starting out as an architectural photographer. I have a list. Number one, supportive spouse, independently wealthy, five year savings, or low commitments. When I started out as an architectural photographer, I had a wife that was working as a physical therapist and we didn't have kids. And so she was bringing home all the money and I was bringing home no money. And I did that for probably four years. I just kept reinvesting that money back into the business, back into marketing, back into equipment. Having a supportive spouse is huge that will financially support you, but also emotionally as you're not bringing home any money for the next few years trying to start out. So you either need that, you need to be independently wealthy to where those kind of things just aren't a concern, which I'm not. Having five years savings built up is going to give you the confidence to make the right decisions for marketing, for building your business, not having that pressure of being concerned about financial things, or if you can have extremely low commitments, keep your costs low, stay out of debt, don't run into a bunch of big monthly payments, don't rent a big studio, don't rent a big house, don't have a big car payment. Put all your money back into growing your business, all your time back into growing your business, developing your aesthetic rather than strapping yourself down financially, which will choke your creativity if you're like me. Number two, be able to speak architect. You either need to be really well read up on the terms of architecture, the different design styles, so you can sympathize with them, speak their language, communicate with them, connect with them, because architects have an extremely difficult business model to make happen. I worked as an architect for three years and I know how hard it is to actually get that business to work, to get on the sympathetic side of an architect, to get them to hand you their very hard earned money and sympathize with their plight of business is key. Number three, form your aesthetic around architecture, not photography. I've seen some architectural photographers that will get really fancy in photographic ways rather than showing the architecture in the best light possible. And by that I mean that they'll bring in lights, directly light something to play kind of fun little photographic games. It, it looks very not natural. If you do the visual maths, you'll see that like a light should be here hitting that, but it's not. And everything starts to look very spotlit and very kind of gimmicky on a photography end, which can really be fun when you're doing things for the sake of photography, but you have to understand that you're overlaying your creativity over someone else's creativity at this point. You're representing someone else's creativity. And if you're speaking too loudly, you're going to be muting the creativity of the project that you're trying to capture. Your photography is there to emphasize the architecture. What an architectural photographer brings, in my opinion, is subtlety. Very creative and beautiful subtlety laid over uh, a work of architecture rather than wow, the photographer really did some crazy stuff here. Maybe that's just my New England regional aesthetic. I do think that architects are very sensitive to not having uh, a high amount of outside vision from what they already perceived in the natural setting. So something to consider. Number four, study your failures and successes. What I'll generally do is if I have an image that hits me as like, whoa, something's really good here. Uh, I'll just look at that image over and over and over and over again, and I'll just kind of study and absorb the different areas and reasons and things in that image of why it was so successful. But I do the same thing with my failures, and oftentimes I think that's more important because it's going to create boundaries that you try and stay within. But if you know those defined boundaries well, you can go outside those boundaries intentionally to, to really say something. Don't just focus on your successes very much. Take in your failures and process and understand those as well. Maybe that's another tip I should put in here. Tip 4.5, be very open to the criticism of people who know what they're talking about. If you find someone who has a credible opinion, an architect, a art director, an editor, anything, 
really sit down, shut up, and listen to their advice because they're going to have an opinion that's very valuable for you, that's going to inform your process, your creativity, the images you select for your portfolio, and so on. Last tip, number five, know your value. So when you're starting out, you're not gonna know what to charge in your area that you're trying to work in. And you're not really even gonna know if your work's that good or not. So what you're gonna have to do is start to observe other photographers in your region that are doing quality work and then attempt to replicate that in some way. You're gonna have to try and get access to projects. You're gonna have to study their work and then you're gonna have to find out what do these guys charge. They're gonna have consistency, quality, reputation, all of that that is going to up their ability to charge more. And you're gonna have to place yourself starting out somewhere below that, but not too far below that. If you go too far below that, you're going to undervalue yourself. And even if you're producing the same amount of work, there's going to be a perceived less value because you're not charging for it. You're gonna have to weigh all that, know your value, and charge accordingly. And that has been my five tips for today. Thank you. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs>